Hello, everyone, and welcome to our latest online event here at the University of California Merced. My name is Ricky Hill. I am your e-recruiter here at UC Merced. I'm so happy to be here with you tonight, and we are thrilled that you could join us for this great online event. We are here tonight to talk about the UC admission application and specifically get to your questions about the academic history section of that application. Tonight's format is a little bit different than some of our other webinars that you may have joined us on in the past. So you do see these slides rotating here in the background. So we don't have a formal presentation for you. Those will continue continuously uh, progress throughout this next hour. So you'll have an opportunity to scan all of these QR codes, grab your smartphone, take some screenshots, some pictures of the different schedules that are coming up. And like I said, those will just continue on throughout the night, but we are here tonight to get to your questions. So having said that, let me give you a couple quick tips. If you need to adjust your audio settings, click down in the lower left corner of your screen to make those changes as needed. If you'd like to adjust the size of your window, click on view options in the upper portion of your screen. Lastly, and most importantly, as I mentioned, we are here to get to your questions tonight. So please take full advantage of the Q&A button. Click on that button, send in your questions. We are fully staffed behind the scenes and we have experts online with us as well on screen to get to those questions tonight. So we're excited to get to all of those this evening. Once again, my name is Ricky Hill and I'm the e-recruiter here. And we are here to talk about the UC admission application and to give you all the help we can specifically about academic history. At this time, I'd like to hand things over to my great colleague, Ruben. Hello, everyone. As Ricky said, I'm Ruben. I'm one of the associate directors for the office. Um, me and my team kind of handle the application as soon as you submit it. So all your data and everything comes to us. Um, and we do a lot of testing on the application and such like that. Um, so. So yeah, we're, we're here to help you submit your application the best way so your data comes over cleanly and, and we have less work to do on our side. So yeah, welcome. Um, if you do have questions, feel free to ask your questions in the Q&A section. Uh, what I was going to say is we're going to focus most of our answers on the academic history tonight. So if your question is regarding anything else besides academic history, we might not get to it. If we have time, of course, we'll get to it. Um, as you can see in the slides that are rotating, in a couple weeks, we will be focusing on uh, the next couple sections of the application activities and awards and scholarships. And then a couple weeks after that, we'll go over the review and submit option um, and such like that. And we have lots of other help that Merced is offering you as well. Um, but these tonight, um, I, is it going to be more of a lecture or are you going to help us? Um, besides this opening that we're doing now, it's all going to be about you. So we're going to get to as many questions as we can via text. So you might get an answer from your question via text, or we might answer your question live. Um, if we answer it live, I might pull up the application and kind of walk you through how to do it. Because if you're asking that question, there's probably lots of others that'll do it. Um, so it might seem like a lecture because I tend to talk a lot, um, but it really is just going to be about answering whatever questions you all have. So feel free to, to ask those questions and we will get to them. All right, let's go ahead and dive right in here. We've got so many questions already coming in. That certainly didn't take long. And one more quick reminder, when you do send us your questions, can you just let us know if you are a first year student or a transfer student? That may impact the type of response that we give you. So we definitely wanna make sure we get your questions and get them answered properly based on the status of, in terms of what type of student you are coming in, either transfer or first year. All right, let's take a look here. What is our first question? If I repeated a course, how do I list that on the application? Do I mark it twice? Do I list it both times? Good, good question. Yeah, if you took a course uh, twice, so maybe you took it once and you didn't do too well in that. So in the ninth grade, go ahead and list that course. Um, so if, you know, let's say I'm a mathematician myself, so I'm gonna pick on English. Sorry for all of you that are, that are good at English. Um, but let's say we didn't do too well our first year of English um, and such like that. You would put that in just like I did in the ninth grade. You took that English course. Uh, but then in the 10th grade, you know, maybe you took that course again. You would just list that course um, once again. So ninth grade, you would put your English course, as I was saying, with the low grades or whatever course that it was. Um, and then in the 10th grade, you would list that you took it again, so English 1. And here's where my school that I selected um, separated the English 1 into first semester, second semester. So you'd enter your first semester grade and your second semester grade like that. 
And then summer session, you took your second year English course now um, with same thing, first semester and second semester grade there. So definitely list uh, the courses. Um, if you took them in the same grade year, then you could definitely list them in the same grade year. But in this example, I took um, English one in ninth grade and then retook it in the 10th grade. Very good. That's very helpful. Thanks, Ruben. All right, the next question is coming to us from a first year student. So thank you so much to this person who's writing in, letting us know that you're first year. The question is, does ninth grade ethnic studies count as the California history requirement and academic history section of the application? Ooh, good question. Um, I'm gonna give one of the most common UC answers out there and say, I, I would say it depends on your high school. I'm I'm going to add most likely not. I would say most most ethnic studies courses are probably in that G category, um, the college prep elective courses, because um, they're they're not quite history. Um, most courses that fall under history are again world history courses, European history courses. Um, some ethnic history courses could be in there, like Chicano studies or history, Chicano history, um, or um, African American history courses may count at some schools as kind of a U.S. history type course, um, but most of these courses are going to be regular world history or U.S. history in this section um, that will count. You can see there is an agricultural government course, so again, kind of government type courses are included in this, um, but most ethnic courses um, are probably going to be here in the college prep elective courses. Again, that's not a guarantee. It really depends on your high school, how they've submitted their curriculum and coursework and how much history is really in that ethnic studies course. Um, but yeah, so um, if you're attending a California high school, you should be able to pull up this course list and it should list what courses are in each one of the areas. If you're outside of California, then you would have to, to make your best guess. Um, but do exactly that, make your best guess. As we're reviewing your application, if we don't think that's a history course, we'll definitely put that course where we think it belongs. Um, so, yeah. Fantastic. The next question is coming in from a transfer student. I have grades from a different country which have a different grading system. Do I need to convert them to an American grading system? So, yeah. Um, sounds like a complicated question, but it's probably one of the easiest answers we'll give tonight. No conversion necessary. You'll want to put in those courses exactly as your marks were given to you um, from that high school. So our international specialists are likely to ask for that transcript um, either after you've been admitted or maybe as they're reviewing your application. So keep your eye on your email address um, that you provide, because if we do ask for it, you'll need to submit um, some sort of record to us. Um, but we'll need that to the grades that you enter or the marks that you enter on the application should match the marks or grades that you receive from your institution without changing it. And as you're setting up your high school, or your college, um, I'm gonna try and do it real quick. This probably isn't gonna be the quickest, but I'll, I'll try and make it quick. As you're entering your high school, you can tell us kind of what grading system it is. Um, so if it's another type of grading system, you can actually kind of give us information um, about the grading system here. Um, and I probably set this up as a, Cal as a domestic high school, so it's not giving me a lot of options. Um, but as you're adding a high school, it will ask you if it's in the U.S. or outside the U.S. Um, trying to get there quickly. Um, so if you put outside the U.S. and you select a country, it might even know what grading system your country is on and kind of give you those options as you set up the high school. So good question. It, um, but exactly as they were given to you is how you should provide them to us. Perfect. All right. We have a couple more coming in from transfer students. So if I'm taking a college course right now, can I put that onto the application? And what about planned future courses? Good question. Let me find my transfer application, which is hiding from me at the moment. Um, so with planned courses, oh, that's why. With planned courses, um, if you're entering them in the right year, so this should be my transfer application with colleges. Um, so I'm going to try and get to that where you enter the courses. Um, so here for spring 2023, um, when you're entering your courses here, um, it 
it will automatically come up as PL or planned. It knows that you're planning on taking that course. Um, for any first year applicants out there, same thing for your 12th grade year, your senior year grades will come up as IP in progress or PL for planned. Um, so you can let us know what courses you plan on taking. If these are not coming up, then you do wanna make sure that you set up your school correctly. Um, and because it should come up for spring 2023, should come up as planned. And if you're entering fall 2022, the courses that you're currently taking should most likely default to an in progress or that in progress grade. If you do have grades, you can change that and put in the grades that you've received so far. Because some semester schools have, you know, six week programs or, or courses that you might be done with and you know what grade you received already. So you can change that. But for fall 2023 and spring, sorry, fall 2022 and spring 2023, um, by default, you'll see those grades show up as in progress or plan um, for college coursework. Again, I know you're not a high school student, but to answer the same question for high school students, um, again, when you're in the 12th grade year and only the 12th grade year and you go to enter your courses, um, Again, I'm just picking random things. You'll see again when I select that course, it automatically comes up if you're on the semester system as grade one being in progress, grade two being planned. Um, so that's how you enter those courses that you're taking now. One last thing to add for transfer students, we realize that you might not have registered for courses yet. Um, so, you know, this is the course that you you plan on taking um, for spring again. But, you know, you don't know if that's going to be full, if you're going to get off the wait list or, or maybe even if it's going to be offered at the moment. Right. Um, so in um, probably the middle of December, I think, or early January, you'll get an invitation to complete what's called a transfer academic update form. So you'll log back into your application. You'll be required to log back in your application and confirm the fall grades that you've received for your fall courses and what spring courses you were able to register for. So that is an additional step for transfer students that you'll need to do. Um, so right now, put the courses that you plan on taking, and then that transfer academic update will come um, a few weeks after the November 30th deadline for you to confirm those courses that you enrolled in. Excellent. Now talking about summer classes, this person's writing in saying that summer courses that were taken after the 10th grade, should it be listed as 10th grade or 11th grade? Good question. Um, so as you're setting up, oh, wrong one. Let's move back to my first year application here. Um, so as you're setting up your high school, um, it will kind of ask you when you took courses. Um, and depending on your resolution um, of your monitor, that might come underneath or it might be side by side. Um, so as you can see, if you took courses after the 11th grade, you can click this button. If you took the course after 10th grade, you can click this button. And then what happens is, you know, if you clicked, I took this course after 11th grade, um, when you, I might get a pop-up warning me. Um, when you go to 11th grade, you will see, Sorry, I needed to click finish adding high schools. Um, you will see that you have regular academic year courses you can enter, and that's where you would enter the course that you took after 11th grade. So we try and make that as simple as possible. Um, if you took it after 11th grade, then enter it here. If you took it after 10th grade, you would need to go back and kind of change that checkbox, um, and then you would have a summer option here in the 10th grade as well. Very good. And now if I dropped a course and it shows up as an NM for no mark on my high school transcript, how do I enter that on the UC application? Oh, good question. Um, for no marks or pass credit courses or no pass credit courses that are taken outside what we call the COVID terms, because um, we realize that we all lived life during COVID and things changed during COVID. Um, so if you're inputting a grade outside the COVID terms, you probably won't have the pass, no pass credit, no credit option in the drop down menu or the no mark option. Um, those wouldn't need to be listed on the application. Um, so the application is only looking for letter grades or number grades, depending on your grading system, um, something where you earned an actual grade according to your high school. 
Um, so pass, no pass, credit, no credit, um, courses taken for those types of grades outside of COVID terms um, are not allowed on the application. Very good. And this one I think is a pretty quick one. How can I change my major once I've already submitted the application? Ooh, um, that's going to depend on our campus during the application process. We don't allow changes of majors. Um, we take care of that if you're admitted and you decide to attend our campus as a first year student, you'll work with your academic advisor to update your major. So before they send you course recommendations to register for courses, they typically ask you, hey, are you still interested in this major? And if you respond no, they'll be like, what major do you want to study so we can get you into the right courses? So you'll have that conversation with your academic advisor. Um, just to remind you again, former said, um, we do admit you to your major, but it is not anything we use during the review process. So we're not looking at you saying, oh, they're a psych major, let's admit them. We don't look at major at all when making our decision for first year students. Um, so major at, at this point in time um, really is just telling your academic advisors to begin with what you're interested in. Again, that comes later. For transfer students, um, the major you apply for is the major that you've been preparing for, hopefully. So we're gonna be looking at your major selection um, and all of that sort of coursework. Um, and since our review starts and we're looking at that coursework and such like that, that that's what we're going to review your application for. Um, and there's very few opportunities to change your major as a junior transfer student, I would say. Um, but for freshmen, again, handled during the academic advising phase later on after you're admitted. Transfer students, you really want to make sure you're selecting the major that you've been preparing for. Very good. And let's see our next question coming up. From a transfer student, I am an international student. At the last high school attended page, should I mark yes for the question, did you attend a school outside of the United States for any part of high school or secondary school? So should they mark yes for that? It sounds like it. If you're an international applicant and you attended those secondary school years um, outside the country, um, and just to show you all what they're talking about, I'm, I'm, this is not set up as an international applicant. Um, but I believe it's in here nonetheless. Yeah, so and again, it's going to be asking it for everybody. So everybody should see this similar question. Um, it just asks you, did you attend school outside the United States for any part of high school or secondary school? Um, so for you, it sounds like you would say yes. And all we're going to do is just ask what language of instruction that was, because um, that will um, we use that in the evaluation of your application. Um, so it's important for us to know. Um, so yeah, if you're applying as a lower division division transfer student, it might go a little bit further and kind of ask you what courses you took and all of that. Um, but as a junior transfer student, that's really all it's going to ask for is what what language of instruction was taken at that school. Very good. And the next question, also a transfer student. I already inserted my college grades. Do I also need to insert my high school grades? Okay. Um, again, right now, this application is set up as a junior level transfer student. Um, so you will see the only thing it really asks about high school is last school of attendance. Um, I don't have a sophomore one that I can pull up, but I might be able to quickly change this one to show you. But I'll, I'll just say, if you're a sophomore level applicant, um, then likely it will ask more information about your high school, including what courses you've taken. Um, as a lower division transfer applicant, so you'll have less than 60 units by the end of the upcoming spring term, um, you do have to meet UC requirements just like the first year freshman has to meet. So all the A through G courses and all of that. Um, there's a few other things we look at. So if you're missing courses, don't feel like that's going to be um, the end of all ends. But um, but yeah, as a sophomore applicant, it will ask you um, what, like more of your high school information. So I'll try and switch this to sophomore. We'll probably get a, a big error saying that it's going to clear out some information um, and such like that. I think I can skip forward now. So you can see now here as a sophomore transfer applicant, it's going to ask some seventh and eighth grade information. Um, no, it wants me to choose a major, doesn't it? No, okay. So it's going to ask the same seventh, eighth grade information that we ask our first year applicants. It's going to ask the same academic information 
um, that we ask of our first year applicants, what courses did you take ninth through 12th grade? And then it's gonna ask not only courses taken after high school, but it's also gonna ask college courses you've taken during high school. So it's gonna kind of separate the two for you. So if you're not a sophomore applicant and it's asking you seventh, eighth grade, ninth, 10th, 11th grade courses, you might wanna jump back to your term and level area and make sure you selected the right level. Um, again, not how many units you've completed right now, but how many units you'll be completing by the end of the upcoming spring semester. So you'll wanna include the units that are in progress and plan um, to figure out your level. Perfect. And this question is kind of general. How do I report a course that I have dropped? Oh, good question. Um, I'm going to assume you're a transfer student. Um, and again, I think I just cleared out everything on my transfer application, but let's see if we can get there um, and look at it real quick. Um, but for transfer students, you should be able to come here. Um, and when you put in a course, I'm just gonna pick a random course, you should see the withdraw option. Um, so we have a few different withdraw options, um, but W for withdraw or WF um, and such like that. Don't, oh, I just hit sign out, didn't I? Okay. Um, so I wanna say in the instruction somewhere, there's information about the different grading systems that are there. Um, Let's see if I can find it for you real quick. Um, so yeah, right at the very top, before you start entering everything, it kind of explains all the different grading, um, grade codes as they call them. So you can see here what a WF is, what a WI is, what a WU is. So you need to, you need to kind of correlate that to what your school is putting on your transcript um, to pick the best option. Um, again, we don't really have a drop to us, it's more of a withdraw. So if you drop the course or you withdrew from the course, you would definitely still wanna add that course and just pick the appropriate withdraw code um, that you have for that course. Perfect, thanks so much, Ruben. I think right now we're far enough along into our program. We'll take a little bit of a break from the Q&A for just a quick second. And just allow me to remind our audience that again, if you haven't yet asked your question, you can do that by using the Q&A button. You can go ahead and click on that, send in your question. We're fully staffed behind the scenes as well as our expert Ruben who is on screen with us with his smiling face answering these questions as they come in. Also during this little quick break, I wanted to remind everyone that we at UC Merced, we are the newest UC in the system and we are blazing trails and climbing the charts. So if you weren't aware, we have a great website that you can take a look at all of our rankings. It's ucmerced.edu slash accolades. And what part of what you'll actually see there, it talks about that we are, one of our rankings is number 11 among public universities and number one in the UC for student participation in undergraduate research and creative projects. There are tons more accolades that you should definitely take a moment and check out that website. And we also wanna let you know that here at UC Merced, not only do we talk the talk, but we walk the walk when it comes to everything sustainable and being green. We were also recognized as number one for the greenest college campus in the US and number one on the sustainable campus index. Like I said, we are very proud of our campus and all of the accolades and rankings that we earn every single year. We continue to climb these charts every single year. We are hitting new number one rankings. Take a look at that website, ucmerced.edu slash accolades. All right, back to you, Ruben, and back to our questions. Let's go ahead and grab the next one here. So I'm a first year student and I'm homeschooled, also in a charter school. How should I list that on the application? Oh yeah, this one, this one's not gonna be so self-explanatory, so I'll, I'll try my best to show you if my application will let me, okay. Um, so as you're setting up your high school, I'm going to just add another high school here. Um, you know, I'm also going to be assuming some things, but I'm going to assume you're in California. If you're not in California, you can definitely choose some of the others. Um, here you have some options. So you can indicate that your school is a homeschool program. Um, and then um, and then you would need to let us know. You can see when I selected that, a second option popped up. Some homeschool students, your curriculum is part of a high school, right? You're enrolling at a high school. They produce a transcript for you. You're just taught independently at home um, or something like that. 
other homeschool programs or maybe more traditional homeschool programs where you're not enrolled at, at you're not associated with the high school, it's your family or your community teaching you. Um, and if that's the case, then you can click the second box here um, and you can see that it'll take you directly to the manually enter your high school information. And you would just enter the information. So what name you were calling it, if anything, maybe it's just your family name, school, that's fine too, kind of where it's at. Um, and then similar questions we ask all other applicants. When did you attend the high school? What grading system is it on? Um, and then what's the term system? Um, that you have. This question hasn't come up yet, but this is a good opportunity to let you know that you can select more than one term system. So some high schools out there um, might have some courses that are on the full term system. So you only get one grade per year, um, but it counts for the full year of curriculum. Um, and other courses might be on the more traditional semester system. So you can select more than one term type here when you're setting up your high school, if your high school does have multiple term types. Or maybe it switched. Maybe the first two years you were there with semester system, and then the last two years um, they switched to the trimester system. Um, so you can select multiple terms there. Um, so again, that's your more kind of traditional homeschool program. Um, if it's um, part of the actual, if it's part of like an actual school, um, then you would follow the similar thing, except for here you would just type in the name of the high school. So. Uh, independent um, so again if you're part of this abraham lincoln independent school um, you could definitely select that as your your homeschool program so depends on what type of homeschool program you're going through um, and and such like that um, if you if you search for your school so you're actually part of a school and you can't find it um, you can use the college board website here to see if they have a college board um, thing to do it you can try and update the search to find it. Um, and then usually if you search more than once, so you try multiple searches or whatnot, you can get to that manually enter school option here. Um, so not the easiest way. If you do need more help than this, I do recommend grabbing that application help desk phone number. I will, I will forward to it right now for you. Um, so definitely write down this phone number um, and you might wanna give them a call and they can definitely help you uh, more one-on-one -on -one to get that school added correctly. Perfect. Thanks, Ruben. The next question we have coming in is from a first-year student, and the question is, what are considered UC-approved honors level classes? Oh, good question. Um, if you're attending a California high school, um, then, the, then your high school spits your curriculum to the University of California. We review it, and we'll determine what's UC-approved honors courses. Um, so it might be a school level honors, which means your school determines its honors level and we've approved it. Um, it may be AP or IB level courses. Um, those are, of course, UC approved honors level courses. And then UC transferable college courses are typically UC approved honors courses as well. Um, so if you're outside the state of California, um, then by definition, UC approved honors courses would only be AP, IB, and college level courses. Um, you can, of course, do an internet search to find more information about UC approved honors courses um, and such like that. Or if one of my colleagues can maybe find um, the A through G course list that explains honors courses um, during the next break, I'll try and find it if, if they can't find it. Um, but there is information online that you can find out what a UC approved honors course is. is. Again, if, if you're attending a California high school, those courses should come up automatically when you're entering um, your courses. So all, all UC approved courses should come up from your high school here. And we already bring in um, what honors level course, if any, um, that course has. So you can see here at the high school I've put in English 2 honors is a UC approved honors level course. Thank you, Caitlin, for getting that in the chat. Um, so if you do have questions about what's a UC approved honors course and whatnot, you can click that link that Caitlin just linked in the chat to find out more information about it. Um, again, your course list should come in with which courses at your high school are UC approved honors courses or not. Um, let me see if I can find an example of one that appears to be an honors level course that is not UC approved honors. Um, I'm probably not going to be able to find one now that I want to, but um, 
But yeah, you may see some courses that have an H in the title, but UC has not approved them as, as honors level. Um, I'm not finding the example right now, but um, you may see some of those as you're working on your application as well. Um, what that means for you, um, that just means that those UC approved honors courses will give you an honors point in your GPA calculation. So instead of a four points for an A, it will give you five points in the GPA calculation. What it doesn't do is it doesn't turn a D grade into a C grade. Um, so your letter grade is still your letter grade, and you would need to put the letter grade in the application as it appears on your transcript. Um, but again, what it does do is it does, get, instead of um, two points for a C, you would get three points. Instead of three points for a B, you would get four points. And instead of four points for an A, you would get five points in the GPA calculation um, that's conducted. Very good. Great information, Ruben. Let's move on to the next one. Another first year student coming in here and listening tonight. So their question or comment is that they will be graduating high school in three years. How can they correctly list that on their academic section of the UC application? Yeah, yeah. going back to the freshman or first year application here. Um, first thing you want to do is, again, make sure you've set up your high school correctly. Um, so I need to do some editing on mine. Um, so you probably started high school in 2020 instead of 2019, which would turn that into three years at high school. Um, the other thing is you probably wouldn't have all four grade levels here selected. Um, so you'd probably do ninth, 10th. Um, and then what we typically recommend here at the UC is skip 11th grade. So you'd have ninth, 10th, skip 11th and go to 12th grade. You need to have that 12th grade year again, because like I said, when we were talking about that in plan progress stuff, you need to have that 12th grade year to put in the courses that you're taking this year, um, assuming you're graduating this year. Um, so you can set it up like that. I'm probably going to get a weird error mess or not warn a warning message, not an error message, because I've already put in stuff. So it's going to say, hey, you might lose some information, um, which I'm just going to say we're OK with. Um, so now. When we try to go to 11th grade here, it says you didn't say you attended 11th grade um, sort of stuff. Um, when we, oh, you know what? It's saying that because I didn't save the high school. Let me say I finished adding high schools, which will let me continue here. So you'll put in your ninth grade courses like normal, your 10th grade courses like normal. 11th grade, it says that you didn't attend it. So you can click that you skipped this grade and hit save and continue. And then in 12th grade, you can, you know, add all the courses um, that you need to add um, for 12th grade. Again, in progress plan for those courses um, and such like that. So that's how we recommend doing it. Get your high school set up correctly um, and then be sure to go to that 11th grade and click that you've skipped that grade thing. Um, you may get additional questions later on and ask you why you skipped that grade, um, especially during the review and submit area. You may be asked why you skipped 11th grade and you can just put information that you took three years to graduate instead of four. Um, and just make it clear to us that that you only have those three years of high school. Perfect, Ruben. All right, so this one's a little bit lengthier, so I'll read it slowly and we might need to do a recap. But this person is writing in and stating that the courses which were mandatory courses in ninth grade, which included global studies for one semester and health education for one semester, those are not coming up in the list for ninth grade courses as they were not articulated by the UC for their freshman year of 19 to 20, 2019, 2020. They were, however, articulated for the next year. So they're wondering, what do they do? How do they list those? Should they list them? Do they not list them? Where do they go? Yeah, it's. I would say it's quite common that those types of questions aren't approved, especially the, the longer out in history that you go. Definitely when I took them in high school, they weren't UC approved courses and such like that. Um, curriculum is changing. So that's what appears to have happened at your high school is the year after you took that course. Um, the curriculum changed and they added something um, more interdisciplinary, most likely, that made those courses um, um, UC approved courses. The year you took them, they weren't approved. So you don't have to worry about listing them in the academic history section of the application. Um, but if you do want those courses included to let us know that you took them, um, we're not really talking about this today, so I'll just quickly show it. Um, but in the activities and awards section here, um, you can add, uh, what do we call it? We call them 
um, other coursework. So you can go in here and add other coursework, and there you can list those other courses. Um, and in this description, you can even say these were mandatory courses that I had to take for my high school graduation. Um, so we it makes it clear that they weren't elective courses for you um, and that you had to take time to take those courses. Um, so that's how we would recommend adding those non-approved courses that were mandatory for you to take um, extra or activities and awards um, and then add in other coursework option. Perfect. And how do students add in additional schools within the same year? OK. Um, we haven't shown that yet, so let me get back there. Um, so you can see here I've added one high school already. Um, if you need to add a second high school, then just click here, add another high school. Um, and, you know, I'm going to do this really quickly, hopefully. i um, going to pick on my alma mater um, and add that. Um, don't ask me how I went to a school in Merced and here at the same time. Um, so we won't worry about logistics here. Um, but you would need to set up the high school just like you would normally. So I'm going to say that I started this school in August of, oh, I don't know, 21. I ended it in June of 22. So I only went to it one year, let's say. Um, and then I only went there one year and it appears to be my junior year. Um, so I'm just going to randomly. Hopefully this works. You would take more time to make sure it's more accurate, of course. Um, on this question, since it's not likely the school that you graduated from, you could just simply say, I did not graduate from this high school. That's the only thing that I would really say is different. Um, you only want to say you graduated from one high school. Um, and so now you can see here we've got one high school. We've got the second high school. They're at the same time, 21, 22. So it does allow that. Um, and then now when you go to the 11th grade, I believe it was, um, you have high school information from one high school that you'll need to add courses for. Um, so the academic year, I even went to summer school, so I would need to add courses for the summer school year. And then you've got the second high school that you can add courses to um, and list whatever courses that you've taken at that second high school. So that's how you would do that. Fantastic. All right. So this one has a question about a sample that you did early on. So what their question is, is that do they go through the UC application, the academic history portion, do they go in and do the example such as first semester English with a grade and then immediately do second semester English with a grade and then go on to say math and do first semester math grade, second semester math with a grade, or do they just look at their first semester plug in everything, first semester, English, math, science, Spanish, grade, 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 and then go on to second semester. Does that make sense? Yep, it makes sense to me. And I would say that depends on how your high school, again, lists your courses, right? In this specific high school here that, that I have up, um, not to pick on them, just as an example, um, they broke up their English one course and their English two courses into this English one first semester English to second semester. So they kind of broke it up. This is the first semester course. This is the second semester course, right? Um, maybe because students can take this first semester and then they can take, you know, this intensive course the second semester or they can take regular English second semester. Not sure why they do this, um, but if your school is breaking it up like English one first semester or English two first semester, um, then yeah, you would want to, since it's only a first semester course, right? You would want to list the grade in the first semester, and you can't take that first semester the second semester, um, so you'd want to put a no grade there. Um, and then again, for English 2, second semester, you can't take it first semester, so you want to put a no, and then second semester, you put the grade you receive. Um, again, I, I don't know how many high schools do this, so I won't say most, but um, typically what you'll see is you'll see just kind of one course, right? English one, not first semester, not second semester. You'll just see English one. And if that's the way it is, then you can just list both grades you received um, kind of in that, just that one course, right? So again, depends on how your school is listing it. If they're listing it first semester, second semester, you might wanna pay attention to that and list it with the first semester grade in the first semester course and the second semester grade and the second semester course, but you'll want to make sure the semester you didn't take it to put that no grade in there. That says you didn't take it. If you leave this as the dash or blank and you try and save and continue, 
you're going to get a warning message saying that there's some errors. And if you scroll down, you can see that it's highlighted that dash. So you need to put that no grade in there. But again, most or some high schools are um, typically they don't separate the semesters like that. So this would be a full year of English here and you could just list both semesters. So again, pay attention to how your school is listing it and the best way to do that. Why I'm doing it here is because they're breaking out the semesters, but you might not see that on your high school and then you could just list both semesters. Um, I, we frequently see that in English and math, I would say, sometimes history. Um, and then I, I don't know how often we see it in the other areas, but English and math, we, we sometimes more frequently see it split up as first semester, second semester or something like that. So depends on your high school um, and just kind of do your best. Excellent. And can you show our audience again uh, how they go through the withdraw options? There was someone that's written in so that they think that we showed that earlier, but they may have missed it. Can we just do a quick review? Yep, I'm going to switch back to my transfer application because that's more common for transfer students, I would say. Um, but first years with college coursework, this this might be applicable to you as well. Um, so I'm going to be in the college attendant after high school. Again, this is a sophomore application. So you junior transfer applicants, you won't see all this high school stuff or most of it. Um, you'll just see the high the, the college stuff. So again, this is a sophomore level or lower division transfer application. Um, so as you're here entering the grades, again, you will see the grade codes here that you can look at to help you determine your high school or your college may call it a drop. We're going to call it a withdraw. And we have a few different withdraw options that you'd want to look at here. Um, if you're not quite sure which one to use, then feel free to send us an email um, or something like that, and we'll help you pick the right one. Um, but usually you can determine what it is. So if you drop the course or you withdrew from the course and it's just a normal withdraw, um, so you withdrew before. For you know, maybe you withdrew after the drop deadline, so that's why it's showing up in your transcript. Um, but you got a W. We'll ask you to put that in as a WI. So just select a course that you took. Again, I'm just going to pick a random one. I tend to stay in the A's because they're on the top. Let's let's pick on someone down below. Okay, we'll pick on physics this time. Just pick the course that shows up on your transcript with, as with the withdraw grade or the dropped grade. Come down here and pick that WI option. And that's how you would list courses that you withdrew from. If you withdrew from them before the add drop deadline and they're not showing on your transcript, I guess I should have clarified that earlier. So you withdrew before the, the add drop deadline at your school and they don't appear on your transcript whatsoever. Those withdrawals you don't have to list because um, you, you successfully withdrew from them before the deadline at your school. Um, they're not showing a record of you taking them. It's only the withdrawals or drops that are on your transcript that you want to list um, on the UC application. Again, what you put in here should match the transcript that we receive from your school. Very good. Now, we do have several questions coming in from our listeners that are very similar to this, so hopefully this will answer many of them at the same time. Uh, so we have the question coming in on how does a student mark something that was a summer only session type course? So only during the summer, where do they put that? They're getting errors if they try to pick a summer. Okay. I'm, I'm going to expand on that a little bit. Again, I've, um, I'm going to go back here on my first year application and I'm going to go back to the high schools. I just added Galt High School. So I'm going to edit this. Um, that is not a magnet school. I don't know how I clicked that. Okay. My application decides to just be random. Okay. I'm clicking things. Okay. So here we attended 11th grade only. Um, let's say that I only took courses after the 11th grade at this school, right? So I didn't take any actual courses during the regular academic year. I only took summer after the 11th grade. Maybe I went to go visit family in this area and I wanted to take summer school. So I enrolled at their local high school and took a summer school course only. Um, so I'm gonna assume this is the error that you're getting. Um, Cause again, I'm gonna get that warning cause I'm adding stuff. When we go to 11th grade, I forgot to save my high schools again. We'll have to well, next year, Ricky, let's have a tracker of how many times I forget to hit that save button because that always gets me. Um, OK, now that I hit that save button, you can see here that since I attended Galt High School, it's asking for this academic year coursework. But I didn't take anything during the normal academic year. Right. I only took a summer course um, and, you know, maybe I wanted to get ahead in math. So I took math three um, during this summer school course and it was only a semester 
let's say it's this, I'm going to leave it there because um, it's a summer school course, right? What did I do? Oh, I hit pre-calculus too. I keep, I keep double clicking or something. Okay. Um, okay. So I put in all my 11th grade courses for my regular school. So this isn't empty. Um, and, but I don't have anything to put here, right? Let me, let me select something here so it, that it doesn't complain later. Again, I don't know how I attended summer session at both high schools. So we'll just ignore this for the moment. Um, and I'm not putting in my full curriculum. I'm just kind of putting one course in. Um, so again, be more thorough than I'm being. Um, but okay, so I have courses and everything, but I didn't take courses during the regular academic year here. If I try and continue, it's going to give me this error message saying, hey, you need to put courses in for, for this area, right? There's the error right there. Please enter your courses. What do you do? Um, I didn't take any courses, right? I don't have any courses to enter. This, we're going to have to trick the application for this one. So pay attention closely. What we're going to do is we're going to go back and say that we didn't attend summer school at, at this school, right? Um, and we're just going to put this course in the next academic year, right? So um, in this case, it's 11th grade. So we're going to trick the application even more, most likely. So we're going to go back to this high school. We're going to edit it. We're going to remove that summer session option here. Right. And we're just going to save and continue. Ruben's not going to forget to hit the I finished high school button this time. So don't increase that tracker, Ricky, because um, I did it. Um, so even though we took it during summer. We're just going to enter it here. Um, it's the best thing we have for you. Um, so just put that integrated math three course that you took during summer um, here. Save and continue. And now it will let you continue. The other word of advice I would have once you do that is in the additional information in down here. Common question is, what is this used for? This would be a great example to say, you know, the math course I took at Galt High um, was a summer course, but I couldn't, or I guess I should say the only course. Sorry, my resolution is really small and that's really far away. Okay. The only course I took at Galt High was a summer course, but I couldn't enter only that course. So I put it in the 11th grade year. So just something like that. So we know now you've told us the summer course, even though the application will let you do it. Um, and that's a really long answer of assuming that you only took a summer course at that high school and it's the only course you took you didn't take any other courses um you're gonna have to oh that's just it's i didn't put in 12th grade courses so that's why i'm getting that error you won't get that error um so again real long way to solve the issue that i think you're having um and anyone else out there that only took a summer course at a high school and no other courses um, you, you have to trick the application. And all I ask is you just tell us that you trick the application so you can get that course in at that high school. I would not just add it to your high school because that's not where you took it, right? You, you want to make sure to add the high school you took it at, let us know you took it, um, and then try and get it in. Most of the time, you're going to add it to the grade after the summer you took it. So if you took it between ninth and 10th grade, you would add it to the 10th grade year of that high school. 11th grade is a little bit different. Um, so since you took it after 11th grade in this example, we would just add it to the spring semester of 11th grade um, to keep it simple. But yep, that's a real long answer, Ricky. I hope everyone kept up with that. Perfect. Thanks, Ruben. All right. The next one's coming in from a transfer student. If I submitted a tag application, is there any way that I can transfer the classes I added to the official UC admission site? Oh yeah, excellent question. I, I feel like I feel like you uh I feel like my bride came through and, and that one came through. Okay. Um I might need to change this again to a junior level applicant because but let's see what I can get to do here. I feel like can I delete this? Mm. 
No, that's not going to take me. Okay, give give me a second. When you're entering um, as a junior level applicant, especially, I know for sure um, when you're there's a, there's a step that'll ask you if you want to import your TAP information. So it's not that you have a tag, it's that you have a, a TAP application. Um, here we go, right here. So right here, junior level transfer student. I didn't see this. Someone correct me if you saw it and I just overlooked it. I didn't see it on the sophomore level application. But on the junior level application here, you have this transfer academic planner step, or sorry, transfer admissions planner step um, that you can actually put in your TAP login from the TAP website. Now, the TAP website is where you put your tag, uh, you submit your tag, um, so they're often seen as similar things, but if you have a TAP account and you didn't submit a tag, you can still do this. Um, you just put in your login information, your email address. I don't have a TAP account, so I can't show you this. Um, if it's the same email address um, that you're using for UC application, you can click that also, and it will fill in the email address already. Um, but yeah, then you can import your data from your TAP into your application. I mean, everything you've put into the TAP, all the courses that you've taken and all that history will come in automatically. It's still a good idea to then go through and confirm all that information came in correctly. Um, and of course, you might not have your spring plan courses in the TAP. You might not have your fall courses in the TAP yet, um, but you can do that. Um, if things aren't showing up correctly, I would call that application help desk number that's that's going around because this is only updated every so often. It, it, um, so if you just made your TAP account yesterday and you try and do this today, it may not be available for you to import yet. Um, so there is a timing issue there, and, and I don't remember what the timing is. So you can always contact that help desk and they'll help you figure out if it's a, a timing issue um, or anything. But yeah, you can import your TAP information as a junior level transfer um, into the UC application. Fantastic. Thanks, Ruben. We are getting so close to the end. Let's see what else we can get in here. There was actually one that I saw that was pretty interesting. So let's go with this one. I attended a high school. I'm sorry. I, I attended a school in Mexico, and I don't know what subject to list English. Should they use that as the LOTE requirement because English is the learning language? Yeah, good, good. That's an excellent question. Um, on the UC application, I don't have time to switch this to a true international application. Um, but when we think of, um, again, this is a California high school, so it's gonna come in looking differently. Um, but English is also known as the language of instruction. So you should be listing, since you since this won't be a California high school, you're gonna have to type all the courses in manually. Um, but English is really the language of instruction. So if you're if the language of instruction at that school is Spanish, then you would list your Spanish courses in this section. If if the language of instruction is French, maybe you're up in Canada and you're studying in French, then you would put French in the language of instruction. Um, so yeah, this area is really language of instruction. If you happen to study English in Mexico, that would actually be your language other than instruction. Um, so it seems backwards, um, but again, if, if you are studying outside the country, then your language of instruction would go here in the English area, and any language you're studying that's outside of the language of instruction would go here in the language other than instruction area. Um, and I don't recall off the top of my head if you do say that your school is in a language outside um, of English, if this updates automatically. I, I, I don't know if you would see a different terminology here. Instead of English, it might say language of instruction. I don't recall. Maybe if one of the chatters recalls, they can ping and let us know. But um, I, I would need to take a little bit more time than I have to, to look into that. But yeah, language of instruction there, language other than instruction down um, in those areas. Fantastic. A quick reminder to everyone here before I do drop in that last question for us tonight. This event has been recorded and many of our events are. So we will have one of our chatters behind the scenes with their fast fingers to go ahead and drop that link in for you. You've already been to the website because you're here with us tonight. So you've already been there. You might already have it bookmarked, but that's where you will find the recording for this within a couple days, as well as the PIQ session that we had a few days ago. We also have many others regarding financial aid, for example. So there's lots of great ones that you may want to hop over 
to that website, click on that instant replay, and it will take you to our YouTube channel for more recordings there. All right, one more quick question for you, Ruben. This one has to do with a math course, but I've seen several even about other topics. If a student takes a class online, some online school that they're able to take a, a class uh, there, do they list that separately as a separate school? Oh, that's a tough one, Ricky. So again, we're going to go back to that default question. You see uh, answer of it. It depends. There's so many online programs. It's hard to know which one yours is. Um, some online programs you will find as a separate school. So you would need to set them up and set them up as a school. One that comes to mind is BYU Independent High School is a separate high school with its own transcript that they will send over. So a program like that would be needed, uh, would need to be added as a separate high school that you're attending. And we've shown some examples of how to do that. Um, other online programs, it's really through your high school, right? Your high school is offering online curriculum and the, your high school is transcripting the course because even though they might not have taught it, right? It was an online course that someone else taught. Um, they are adapting it as their curriculum. And in that case, you would just add it as a normal high school course that you took. Um, some examples I can think of this, although it's not 100%, is UC Scout tends to be a program that your high school offers as their curriculum, even though it's an online program. Um, and your school may even add that course to their A through G course list. Um, I don't know if I have any. Oh, um, so right here, we can see an example of that. Um, so right here, this is through a. Uh, I called it UC Scout. This is calling it UCCI. Um, so, you know, the school has added this online course to their curriculum and you would add it um, just by clicking this link. So that's a tough one to answer because I don't have enough information about the program that you're attending, but it, it really could go either way. Add it as a separate high school um, or your high school may adop be adopting it as their curriculum and be adding it to their course list. Um, so I definitely work with your high school counselors on that one to see um, which route you might go with that. Very good, thanks Ruben. Before I start to wrap up our show tonight and give a couple of pieces of really important information, I'd like to go ahead and give you a moment and you can go ahead and leave your farewell thoughts tonight or any last minute words of advice. Yeah, I, I guess last minute word of advice I have because this question came up and we didn't have time to tackle it is PIQ help. Uh, again, um, we don't have one of these sessions Monday evenings to cover the PIQs. It's really just copying and pasting the PIQs in the, the PIQ area. Um, so we're not covering that. Um, but we do have some PIQ resources and this slide is going to move. But scan that QR code. We had uh, not we, um, but the, the team had a webinar just last week about PIQs, how to write your PIQs, et cetera. Um, so if you are looking for PIQ help, I do recommend going and reviewing that um, that series. Um, if that's not enough for you and, and you're good with YouTube, you might be able to find the one we did last year, unless we took that down, Ricky. I don't know if we took last year's down or not. Um, but lots of PIQ help um, that is being done, um, that sort of stuff. So if you're looking for PIQ help, we do have webinars out there. There are resources out there for you. That's not really what this series on Monday evening is about. Um, but yeah, so that's my last word of advice. There is help out there. Look for it. Hunt it down. We've got this workshop and then we've got um, these workshops that are coming up as well for you that you can go to that um, one, which is that same events page that I think Ricky was just talking about. Um, so that takes you to the same place. And then, of course, the application help desk does have extended hours through the month of November. So you can see already they're open till 10 p.m. taking phone calls. Um, and then kind of the last week of November is they extend the time that they're available. So. Um, Call the application center if you're having technical issues. So if you get one of those error messages that you can't figure out how to clear, they're a great resource um, for you. And you can get their information anytime you want to by being in the application and clicking this help button here and just scrolling to the very bottom. There's their there's their phone number right there that you can call. Um, or before you log into the application, um, their hours and everything are here at the bottom of the login screen. So I know that was a lot, Ricky. Sorry. And, and we need to go. So I'll, I'll stop there. <laughs> Thanks, Ruben. So much good information. It's hard to fit everything in an hour, but 
If you remember nothing else, just know that the November 30th, 1159 p.m., that is the deadline to get that UC admission application submitted. So it's critical that you make sure you mark your calendar, you write yourself a post-it, you put that every place that you can so that you don't forget. And that's the whole point of all of these sessions that we have. We are here to answer your questions, to get you on track as early as possible so that you have plenty of time to draft out your PIQs, to look at all these different sections. And if you have questions that you can attend sessions like this with experts like like Ruben and everyone behind the scenes. Like I said, they're all experts. So please continue to attend all of these sessions. The links are in the chat box. So go ahead and open that. If you haven't yet, start clicking on those links. I will talk for another minute so that you have some time to do that. A couple things that I do want you to know, as we said, these sessions are recorded. You can find those online. The links are in the chat, as well as one specific to the PIQ that I dropped while Ruben was talking. It's the same as the QR code. So that will take you straight to the YouTube channel to that replay. A couple of other things though, if if you haven't yet had a chance to take a tour of our beautiful campus, I highly, highly recommend it. Of course, I'm biased because I'm here at UC Merced, but I can tell you firsthand, being here in person is an experience like none other. We actually are offering now our campus tours seven days a week. We are so thrilled to invite you here and we want to make sure that we give you every opportunity available. So seven days a week, we have tons of different times of day that you can schedule that. One of my colleagues will drop that into the chat for you. So at your leisure, you can go ahead and go to the site, get yourself and your family registered and take a little walking tour of our beautiful campus. Uh, behind me, you see part of our campus there, one of our main quads, but there's lots more to see, tons of green space, as I said, Said we're very sustainable here and there's it's very high tech but we're yet we're sustainable so there's lots of green and lots of high tech things here in addition to that we have a special program that's called experience uc merced we will drop that link for you as well go to the website that's the best i can say because i know we're running out of time but experience uc merced is exactly that you get to come here you actually get to go into some lab spaces some classrooms some lecture halls and experience uc merced so it's exactly as it sounds and you also have an opportunity for a campus tour. So it's all bundled together. Lots of dates coming up from November 1st. So it just started a few days ago through November the 18th. There is a website, as I said, you can go there and get yourself registered. Lastly, like I said, everything's been recorded. We hope to see you again at a very future event. We have many more coming up. So take a look at those websites. We will see you here again. Ruben will be back with me, everyone behind the scenes. And if you haven't yet followed us on social media, please take a look there as well. TikTok is our newest channel. Life at UC Merced is the handle. We are growing in our population there. We are about to run another contest, so don't miss out on that either. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Have a great night, and we'll see you soon.